What's going on guys? Welcome back to GTA 5. As I'm sure a lot of you guys know, we recently got the Dominator ASP or the SVT Cobra here in GTA Online. And obviously I had to try and give it a drift build and I'm pleasantly surprised with this car. So I'm gonna be taking you guys through the entire build, every single mod that I did on this car. So you can choose which ones you apply and which ones you don't. And then we're gonna go driving so I can show you what this car can do. Cause it's a pretty decent little drift car. All right guys, here we are at the car meet mod shop. I'm gonna quickly walk you through the entire build before we go driving. So our armor is gonna be at 100%. Our brakes are gonna be stock. For bumpers up front, we have the primary aggressor bumper and in the rear, we have the primary street bumper. For our engine guys, our block is gonna be the primary ridged V8. Rail covers are gonna be stock. We got our fittings. They're gonna be plastic 450 CUI intake manifold. Strut brace, light and racing. Engine tunes gonna be level four and intercoolers, none. Exhaust, we got the twin bores out the back. Fenders, we got the stock front fenders and stock rear fenders as well. Our hood is gonna be chrome hood catches on the primary vented hood. Our horn is gonna be stock. Our interior, we got the semi-stripped interior for dash. Dials are gonna be stock. Doors, we got the stock doors as well. Seats are stock too. I was really going for more of a street look on this one. We do have an aftermarket steering wheel with the Apex Basic and just a street half cage as well with the tinted windows so you really can't see it. For lights, I actually think I want the blue lights on this car. I probably should have threw them on before or the white, maybe the white lights. I'm gonna swap to white lights actually. And then no neons on this one. No livery either guys. Nice clean paint job. Loss and theft happen automatically. No louvers on this car either. Our mirrors are gonna be the primary mirrors. No mud guards on this car. Our plate is gonna be blue on white number two. Our respray, same combination actually wheels and color as our S13. We have metallic grace red for the primary and secondary colors. Our trim color is dark steel. Accent color is gonna be ice white and no crew emblem on this car. For the roof, we just have a stock roof. Skirts are gonna be primary extended. Spoiler, now we have the stock spoiler for performance reasons on this car. I think the main grip of it is that it just has too much grip. So adding any spoiler that's not stock increases downforce and makes it even harder to drift. Now this can work out for you at higher speeds, but I think it's still better with the stock spoiler. Looks wise though, it would be primary ducktail all day. That looks so much better. For sun strips, we have the black sun strip up front. On the windshield, we got competition suspension all the way low and then all the way low in the interaction menu as well. Transmission is gonna be the race transmission. Usually I run a lower transmission on a drift car, but it just seemed like the race transmission was the right fit for this one. We got a stock trunk too, no carbon. We do have the turbocharger on there as well. For wheels, we actually have SUV wheels again, and they are called Dash VIP. Our wheel color guys, carbon black, and for tires, of course, because it's a drift car, we have our low grips on, no tire letters or smoke. Windows are tinted all the way out, and I think that is gonna complete our build, guys. So up next, I'm gonna take you to a couple of my favorite spots for the Dominator, and we're gonna get this thing ripping. All right, guys, so spot number one is one I'm sure you guys are all familiar with. We're down here at the docks in case you haven't been here yet. And the reason why I picked this spot, honestly, is because it's one of the ones that the Dominator is the worst at. These long kind of extended sections are really, really tough in this car. And it's because it likes to do this thing where it either spins or grips up. And I'm gonna try and show you both of those. So in a typical drift, it'll kind of do this. See how it grips up right there? It doesn't stay in drift the way the S2000 will. Well, there is a way to fix that. And I think the thing with this car, honestly, is that it's just super handbrake happy, even when you're drifting longer sections like this. And the cool thing about drifting the docks is that it really forces you to get comfortable with the handbrake. And so I think that in this car, it's not so much about holding the handbrake for these really long power slides, right? It's more about engaging the handbrake to act as a clutch kick to scoot the car around. So there's two places where you really wanna engage the clutch kick on this car. One is when you're changing momentum, and the second is when you're about halfway through a drift. So let's take this line for example, right? If I'm coming up here, I'm gonna be drifting to the left, and then eventually I'm gonna to wanna to change my momentum. So I'm gonna hit a clutch kick right about here to change my momentum, and then right when I'm about here is where my car is gonna to wanna to straighten out and do that thing where it drives off the side of the road like I just showed you guys. That's where I'm gonna hit my second clutch kick. And that's way more than the S2000 needs, right? The S2000, you're pretty much just moderating your throttle after that first clutch kick. This car, not so much. You really need to stay uh, vigilant on where your RPMs are at so that you can keep hitting that handbrake and that clutch kick. Otherwise, it will grip out and straighten out. That's what it just did there where it kind of it kind of freaked out a little bit. But if you can get in a rhythm with it, where you're hitting the handbrake right when you need to, you really can extend, you can extend this car out as you guys can see here. So this is a really good practice line for all of that, trying to keep the drifts in this car nice and smooth. And then obviously too, if you wanna come out and practice different areas, um, the docks are great for that too. And then you also have a nice long straight if you guys wanna practice, practice your 360s down here too. So the docks is a great section, a, a little deep. I'll go this way. Hmm. So I definitely recommend trying out the docks if you haven't already. 
All right, guys, so here we are for spot number two. Might be another one that a lot of you guys already know of. Here it is on the map if you guys are curious. Let me get the waypoint off there. And I don't know if there's a line that people normally run up here, but I made this one up for myself. I did it originally in the S2K, but it's even more fun in the Dominator because the Dominator has a little bit more torque and grip coming out of that corner there. We basically just run a big, like, I don't know if it's a figure eight. It's a little different, but you come around that pole, you come around this speed bump, and then you loop it back. And this is kind of like LSIA up here. It's a little bit more slippery than the asphalt, so I definitely recommend starting with a spot like the docks just to get used to the clutch kick. And then when you come up here, you're going to find that you have an absolute blast on the slippery surface once you know how to engage that clutch kick and keep the car sliding. Now this is a really fast drift car. I think that's the biggest difference between this one and the S2K for me is that this one is just, the grip makes it so much faster, right? And the S2K, as fun as it is, can be a little bit miserable to freestyle with in the road because it doesn't have that speed. It can't go up hills, it can't catch up to friends. It's So in some ways, even though I think the slide quality on the Mustang is maybe a little bit lesser, it is a better car to drive around the map. In fact, I'm going to show you guys, so as with any parking lot, it's really fun to rip down. And usually I end these videos after two spots, but I think I should show you guys exactly how great this car is. Oh, look at that wall tap, boys. With, um, with the freestyle drifting in the street, because I think that's really one of the places where this car shines. So we're going to, uh, we're going to keep doing the, uh, the old skids down here, see if we can keep it linked. And then we're gonna head out to the, uh, to the road and do some freestyles, man. All right, guys, so here we are out in free mode. This is probably my favorite way to drive this car, just freestyling around, see what kind of trouble I can get into. Now, something I should mention too, guys, is if you find on the road, like, you need a little bit more rotation out of this car, work that left foot brake in a little bit, and you'll, uh, you'll find it does wonders for keeping that car in drift. Because the biggest problem with this car, for sure, is I'll try and show you one more time. Something that you want to watch out for is, like, it didn't do it there. <laughs> now that I'm trying to get it to straighten out, it's not going to do it for you guys. Come on, Mustang, straighten out! Right... there. See how it's like, it's not spinning the tires, it's gripping up? That's where you really want to make sure you're either using your left trigger or your handbrake, your clutch kick, to get some spin back out of the car to keep a nice smooth drift. But once you get those techniques down, this car really does get down pretty well. Now, would I put this car in the same tier as the S2000? It's pretty good, but... I don't know, man. I, I still think the S2K is the best drift car in the game. I think it's a cut above all the rest. I did not mean to spin out there. But this car does drift, and it is super fun. It's a viable drift build, and in some ways, it is more fun and more capable than the S2K, especially with getting around the map uh, without crying when you hit a hill. So it is definitely a great car, guys. I definitely recommend if you've been into drifting on this game and you need a new car to build up, I highly recommend checking out the Dominator ASP. It is, uh, it is a great car. It's a good-looking car. It sounds awesome. And obviously, as you guys can see, it gets some pretty nice drifts if you take the time to figure figure out exactly how you want to drive it. Ooh, can we link this? Almost. I want to hit that corner again. But guys, I think I'm going to get some more slides in this Dominator. If you did make it this far, I genuinely appreciate you watching. If you guys did enjoy the video, feel free to leave a like down below. Subscribe for more car-related and GTA 5 content just like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.